Hello and welcome. This course on the user-defined path in the ANSYS Fluent emphasized the ease of customization by showcasing the various options available under field functions and user-defined groups. These tools can be used to customize and enhance the capabilities of ANSYS Fluent, provide flexibility to the users to impose special boundary conditions, apply custom material properties, employ new physical models, and much more. In this lesson, we do a hands-on demo to better understand the applicability of various options in the user-defined tab with specific emphasis on defining expressions and creating variables using custom field function calculator. Without any further delay, let's get started. In this demo, we will simulate a steady laminar flow of air through a pipe. The goal of the simulation is to attain a fully developed flow at the pipe outlet. We will first run the simulation using a fixed inlet velocity of 10 cm per second, through which we will also learn how to change units for a particular variable for the user's convenience. We will compare the inlet and outlet velocity profiles to understand the flow development and then define a parabolic velocity profile at the inlet using named expressions, run the case and again compare the inlet and outlet velocity profiles. In the process of setting up and running the above cases, we will also show how to create variables using custom field function calculator. Launch ANSYS Fluent in Solution Mode Once the ANSYS Fluent solver launches, load the provided mesh file. Once the mesh file is loaded, follow the ribbon to set up the simulation. The ribbon is used to guide the basic ANSYS Fluent workflow from left to right, starting with the Domain tab. In the Domain tab, let's perform mesh check and examine the output in the console to make sure no errors are reported. Here we see the mesh check returns no error messages and the minimum volume is positive. In the physics tab, we will use the default solver settings in the general task page as we are solving a low speed steady state case. Now let's move forward to the models group. Here we see that viscous is colored blue implying that a turbulence model has already been defined. A hand calculation of the Reynolds number using a pipe diameter of 0.1 meter and average velocity of 10 cm per second gives a Reynolds number of 684. This indicates that the flow is laminar. As the Reynolds number is lower than the turbulence onset Reynolds number for internal flows of approximately 2300. Later in this video, we will also demonstrate how to calculate the Reynolds number using the custom field functions. As the case we are solving here is laminar, let's go ahead and click viscous to set the viscous model to laminar. As our working fluid is air in this case, which is the default material in ANSYS Fluent, we do not need to do anything with the materials panel or the cell zone conditions task page. So let's go ahead and click Boundaries. As already discussed, we will first solve this case using a uniform inlet velocity of 10 cm per second. Note that the ANSYS Fluent uses SI units by default for all variables while solving any problem and change of units is only for user convenience. We can set up different units for a particular variable using the Units menu in the Field Functions group. For this problem, let's click on Units and set units for velocity as centimeter per second. To know the current units chosen by ANSYS Fluent, we can click on List button here. This will display a list containing all variables with their current units, conversion factors and offsets in the console. Now, in the Boundary Conditions task page, Let's edit the inlet and set the velocity magnitude to 10 cm per second. 
We will then review the remaining boundary conditions. Interior fluid is an interior boundary and needs no settings. By default, outlet is set to a pressure outlet with a zero gauge pressure, which is good. And side is set to wall, which is what we want. We are now ready to run the case. For this, we will go to the solution tab, initialize the solution, set the number of iterations to 100 and click calculate. Note that no changes are needed in the solution tab as the default settings have been optimized and work very well for most cases. The solver will iterate until all the residuals fall below the convergence criteria. Let's now move to the results tab to post-process the results. For this, let's create a plane along the length of the pipe through its center to display contours of velocity and two line surfaces on the pipe inlet and outlet to plot the velocity profiles. Let us now go to contours and click new. Change the variable to velocity and select the XY plane as the surface. Click save or display. In the graphics window, we can see contours of velocity magnitude along the length of the pipe. Here, we can notice the boundary layer developing along the pipe wall. For velocity profiles, let's create a new xy plot. Change y-axis function to velocity and x-axis function to direction vector for both inlet and outlet line surfaces. Click save or plot. Notice that the velocity profile at the inlet is flat while the velocity profile at the outlet is still developing which is obvious by its central flat region. Now let's replace the fixed velocity with the parabolic velocity profile at the inlet using named expressions. Before any modifications, let's save the case and data files by using write from the file menu. The named expressions once created can directly be used in the entry field of the boundary conditions and other input panels. The parabolic profile is defined here. An equivalent ANSYS fluent expression would be as shown here. In this expression, Umax is the maximum velocity at the center of a parabolic profile. Radius is the local radial coordinate and radius max is the radius of the pipe. So, it looks like a good idea to break this expression into three simpler parts by defining three named expressions for u max, radius and radius max and then combine them to create our expression for the parabolic profile. Let's now go ahead and do this. Right click on the named expressions in the outline view and insert a new expression. Create an expression for maximum velocity named u max and set it equal to 10 cm per second. Note that till the expression is fully typed in, including the units, the expression editor box is highlighted in orange which implies that the expression is still not complete and at the moment it's not valid. It is mandatory to enter units when using constant values. The description box can be used to add a comment to remind you later what it is for, such as maximum velocity inlet profile. And the used in box shows where this expression has been used. We will see this later in the video. Next, we will create a new expression for the radius of the pipe. Name it radius max and enter expression square root of inlet area divided by pi using mathematical functions for the square root, reduction functions for the area function, constants for pi. Select inlet in boundary zones under locations from the context menus. Alternatively, if we already know the expression, we can also type it in. If the result of an expression is a single value, it can be inspected in the console. For that, Right click on the expression name, in this case radius max in the outline tree and select compute. We see here that the radius of the pipe is approximately 0.05 meter. Next, 
create a new expression for the local radial coordinate and name it radius. In this tutorial, as the pipe length is along the x-axis, the radius variable equals the square root of the sum of squares of the y and z coordinates. Lastly, let's create the expression for the parabolic velocity profile named inlet velocity profile by combining all three expressions. We can build the expression using menus or type it in. As we type, any possible matches are shown in a pop-up. After creating the desired expression, we need to assign it to the pipe inlet in the boundary conditions panel. Here, change the velocity magnitude input type to expression and select the expression inlet velocity profile from the list of available named expressions. As it has been shown in the previous lesson on expressions, the input is not restricted to existing expressions, but they are better organized by having them predefined in the named expression editor. If we want to know where an expression is used, we can look at the used in box in the expression editor for that specific expression. For example, expression inlet velocity profile is used in inlet which is the inlet boundary surface for our case. We can also look at properties of the expressions created by going to Expression Manager, which can be accessed by right-clicking on named expressions in the tree and selecting Manage. For example, click on Expression Radius Max and see its definition. It is single-valued, its dimension is in meter, and it is used in Inlet Velocity Profile Expression. Here, we can also import or export expressions in tab-separated values or TSV format to be able to use them in other cases. Now, let's reinitialize the solution and rerun the simulation. Once done, select the velocity contour from the results section of the tree. Notice that the flow seems to be already fully developed at the inlet and the cross-flow velocity distribution appears to be constant along the length of the pipe. From the result section, select the velocity plot in the tree and notice that the velocity profiles at the inlet and outlet are the same and are of parabolic nature, which is indicative of a fully developed flow. Now that we have solved our case, let's use custom field function calculator to create a new variable for Reynolds number and verify that our hand calculation was correct. Reynolds number is calculated by multiplying the fluid density by fluid velocity and the internal pipe diameter and then dividing the result by dynamic viscosity. To define the custom field function, click on custom field function calculator in the field functions group under user defined tab. In order to start defining Reynolds number, we will select round bracket first. Then from the field functions, we will select density and click multiplication operator. Now select velocity and velocity magnitude. Click multiplication operator and enter point 0.1 for diameter of the pipe followed by round close bracket. Next use division operator and select properties under field functions with molecular viscosity in the sub tab. Name it Reynolds number in the new function name text box and click define. This variable is now available under parameters and customization in the outline view. We can now compute its value by right clicking on report definitions under solution in the outline view and selecting new volume report and then volume average. This opens volume report definition panel. Let's now select custom field functions under field variable and then Reynolds number in the sub tab. Select fluid under cell zones and click compute. As we can see in the console, the Reynolds number is 680. This is very close to our hand calculated Reynolds number of 684. Notice that the velocity is not in SI units as rest of the variables and we are not even multiplying the equation with an appropriate factor to account for it. 
This is because ANSYS Fluent uses SI unit in the background. So the variable values that are a part of the custom field functions are converted to SI units before the expression is calculated. That is why we need not account for any factors when creating custom field functions. So that concludes fully developed flow in a pipe demo. In this lesson, we learned how to change units for a particular variable and how to make use of named expressions in customizing ANSYS Fluent to impose special boundary conditions such as a parabolic velocity profile. We also learned how to define them in boundary conditions panel within the ANSYS Fluent user interface and further understood how to make use of expression manager to check properties and import or export the expressions created. Lastly, we also learned how to use custom field function calculator to define and compute custom post-processing variables. With that, let's wrap it up.